What's up LEGO Builders? Welcome to LEGO Star Wars History with Professor Coconut. The classic clone base era. What a golden age for LEGO Star Wars mock builders. The bases were big, packed full of computers, control rooms, the hangars were full of vehicles, while scores of clones and droids battled outside. This renaissance of LEGO Star Wars mocks was brought about in around 2008, in large part because of the massive wave of Clone Wars sets we got that year, most notably being the Clone Trooper Battle Pack, whose release suddenly made army building possible for anyone. Now we had all of these armies being created and they needed bases to defend and house them. The classic clone base, as I call it, has a very distinct architectural style to it that I'll talk more about later. Today, I'm going to be challenging myself to build two clone bases replicating this unique style of clone base. I have spent hours studying all different kinds of base designs. And as an added challenge, I'm going to be building these mocks at two different price points, one at $100 and $200. All right, history lesson's over, so go ahead and execute order 66 on that like button and let's get started. First up is the $100 base. This is gonna be the smaller of the two, so I want to do some kind of communications base or outpost, which tend to be smaller. I'm not including the terrain and the cost of the base, only the structure itself, since that's what this challenge is focused on. I mentioned earlier, these clone bases have very distinct features, some of which are large rounded floor to ceiling windows, doors, landing pads, antenna, satellites, and of course, lots of dark bluish gray and light bluish gray brick. The main structure of most bases is very simple. Not a lot of detail or texture on the walls, most of any of that being on the inside. I'm building my base on top of some rocks to make it a little harder to get to and because that will look cooler. I'm going with dark tan for most of the terrain because why not? Since the base is raised up, I'm going to need some stairs to get to the door. The little pop out on the side is going to be the entrance of the base. Just a small red door because it's a Republic base and you need dark red. I don't need any kind of large door for vehicles. I'm using one by light bluish gray brick for the walls and using a couple of headlight bricks to connect some more detail pieces on later. Making the walls like this for a video is so much less work than what I normally do. Instead of trying to pack in as much detail into the walls as possible, I'm just throwing down brick. But I am doing something cool with the front wall to contrast with the simplicity of the side walls. Every base needs a giant window for the commanders to look out dramatically and survey the battles outside. In order to achieve the same angle as those round plates on the front, I'm going to be covering the floor with tile and using a bunch of rounded 1x2 plates and cylinders with stacks of 1x2 brick in between to create a curved wall of glass. In the middle of the wall, I'm connecting the stacks to the ground because they aren't at an angle and can connect directly to the floor. This should also help make the whole front wall more stable. Next, it's time to add the floor of the interior. I'm really low on light and dark bluish gray tile, so I'm adding in some 2x plate. I'm so low on tile that I had to use some of my old light gray pieces. Once that's done, it's time to make this interior look like an actual base, adding a weapon rack, lots of computers, because you can't have a clone base without clones diligently pressing away at buttons and computers. I'm trying a new technique where I take two antenna bases and stick a little window pane in them to create a small computer screen. I really like how this looks and it's nice to have some actual screens mixed in with all the printed bricks and tiles. Now the most important part of any communications base is are the giant satellites and antenna that will be on the roof. I'm building a series of smaller radar dishes and connecting them all to one antenna. I made the roof out of snot brick because pretty much every clone base back in the day had some part of the roof that was removable so you could look in and see all the action inside. The base is all done but the foundation is still looking pretty naked so I'm going to add some smaller rock walls to cover them up and make it look more like the base was built on top of a rock formation. The only tricky parts are the curved sides of the front wall. Here I put down some tile on the ground underneath and set little rockwork builds on top. Let me know down below in the comments if you think I should change my channel name to Coconut Rockwork Studios. Last thing is to add some tile to the steps to make them nice and smooth. This mock came in just under budget at $95, which isn't bad, although I'm probably off by about $5 to $10. This looks like someone smashed together your grandma's house in a clone communication space. I have Commander Green and his 41st Elite Corps fighting off a group of droids trying to disable the clones ability to communicate with Republic forces off the world. I think the large window in the front is my favorite, but unfortunately the windows didn't follow the curve of the wedge plate as smoothly as I would have liked. <gasps> 
the interior is full of clones running to defend the base and call for help. I would say overall this mock was a success, but don't forget to let me know what you think of it down below in the comments. Now it's time to double the budget and see what happens. I knew at least one of these mocks had to be on some kind of green field or plane. That's what so many of the mocks were built on back in the day. I'm all out of green plate, so I'll have to use two by four bricks, which means placing down tons of bricks next to each other in succession. I always seem to end up doing the most tedious building techniques for these mock challenges. On the back half of the mock, I'm changing the pattern because I'll be using a ton of two by four light bluish gray tiles, so I will need less brick underneath. This is gonna be a large open topped base. I'm going to stick with simple walls once again, and I'm adding in some tall slopes at the corners and edges of the walls with regular brick in between to give it some more detail and texture. If you're wondering why the slopes don't run the whole length of the bottom, it's because I didn't have enough to do that. This base is actually going to be a mix of the classic clone base style and what me and my friends built growing up. Ours were a little different as we didn't have access to YouTube and couldn't see what everyone else was doing. I used to really struggle with building doors and openings to bases until I realized I could just make the door a wall of lasers. The entrance to the base is gonna have to be pretty big so that hover tanks and other smaller vehicles can get in and out. The laser portion of the doorway is going to be built using trans light blue cylinders stacked on their sides. Some of you very long time viewers will recognize this technique because I used it ages ago in one of my first clone bases on the channel, Republic Base on Kashyyyk. I'm going to space the rows apart by one brick and they are connected to the walls by headlight bricks. To be honest, this kind of reminds me of the electric gate from The Incredibles. The reason I built the entrance before the front wall is because I wanted to make sure that it was placed in the middle of the wall and that it was wide enough for the vehicles to fit through. The shell of the base is done and it's time to build the interior, but here I ran into a huge problem. I had a bunch of 2x4 tiles on the way that I was going to use for the floor of the base, but when the package arrived, this package of tiles came just in time. This, what? No. No. This can't be. No! all the 2x4 tiles were missing. Turns out the seller forgot to include the 200 2x4 tiles I ordered. They are on the way now, but I have to figure out a new plan for the base floor. I am once again turning to snot brick, which has become a staple in my mocks of late, as pretty much all my tile is going to Coruscant. I don't have a ton of light bluish gray brick, so I don't know how much of the floor I can cover, but at least it's a start. I'm going to add some rings of dark bluish gray brick around the outside of the rectangle I built to make it bigger and a little more interesting and then fill in the back with what brick I have left. I scrounged around and gathered together all the dark bluish gray pl plate I could find, even taking some off of Coruscant. This should fill, be enough to fill up the empty spaces on either side of the snot section. It's not gonna be as pretty as tile, but at least now I will be able to finish the base. The silver lining is I now have a lot of exposed studs that I can build on. I'm going to copy the clone base in my Coruscant mock and add some parking areas using yellow plate and tile for the hover tanks. I'm adding a medical section with some back to tanks and monitors and a bed with some controls. I'm putting up a little partition wall to create a little bit of separation between rooms. On the far end, I will have the counters where the food and stuff will be and then some tables and chairs in the open area. Fun fact, these are the same tables I will be using in the entertainment section of my Coruscant mock. Last but not least, I need to add some guns to protect the base. Now that the base is done, it's time to add some grass. This will help keep the clones safe as they relax in the field. Yeehaw! At last, I am all done. This mock was supposed to be around $200, but didn't even break 125. <clears throat> but the mock still turned out pretty good. I have a much larger droid force this time, and they brought an AAT as well, because if you're taking on a full-size clone base, you need some serious firepower. The door is probably my fate, one of my favorite parts. I did realize that I should have made the wall of lasers solid and not had a gap between each one, because now stray laser bolts can get through the gate and damage the base and the clones. The walls look pretty nice as well. The slopes add just the right amount of detail to the walls, as they still look simple, but not too boring. The interior is very reminiscent of the bases I would build as a kid. I didn't have a lot of gray parts, so there were a lot of open spaces and any walls were pretty short. The commissary area was fun to build because I never really built casual stuff like this. In all the chaos, however, I accidentally added one clone just casually strolling to the entrance. What a video. This was a very intense yet fun building challenge. I normally stick to smaller price points, so having both builds be over $100 was a real challenge on top of just building the bases. Which of these mocks was your favorite? And what should the focus be for my next building challenge? Let me know down below in the comments and I will catch you next time, but until then, happy building.